Hey, what's going on, Brandon? It's Kyle Carroll. How are you? How you doing, bud? I'm doing well. Yourself? Good, good. Just getting home from practice, actually. Glad. How was practice? Uh, pretty good. Been pretty rugged the past few weeks. Okay. I've done a lot of hard work, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you got a big fight coming up. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I guess we could just dive right into it. Um, yeah. Tell, you're, you're two and three in your amateur career. Uh, tell me what you expect from this fight coming out. Or going into it? Um, well, I mean, before I even had this previous fight, I've, I've been real hungry. So, um, I mean, you were there, commentary and whatnot, at the last fight. I mean, I think you know, and anybody else who attended there, that was definitely not considered a loss in my book. Um, that definitely, that fight should have went to stoppage. But uh, it just made me even more eager. And uh, I'm looking at this kid right now to go right through him and get the W, and then I'm coming after that 145 belt because uh, that should be in my hands for sure. Um, yeah, like you, you mentioned briefly, like the last fight at Cage Wars 34, um, it kind of probably should have been ended at the stoppage. Tell us your thoughts about that fight. Um, I mean, I'm really not even that mad at the fact that I lost that one. Well, I was more mad at the fact that uh, if that was me in that situation get beat on like that, that, that is a stoppage issue. It should have been stopped. Um, they even said in the rules meeting, you know, that uh, if, you're get, if you're fully mounted and you're taking blows and you're not defending properly, we're not going to be calling shots to the back ahead or this or that. You know, if you're not properly or intelligently defending yourself, it's going to go to a stoppage. And, uh, I mean, you saw two times in the first round completely dominating the kid. Should have been stopped. Um, so I'm just looking at that as a win in my book, you know, overall. I mean, he was a tough kid, you know, fought hard, but uh, definitely just looking past that fight and uh, focusing on what I got ahead of me right now. Oh, what do you learn from from a situation like that? Um, I got a little eager towards the end after getting hit in a, you know, a couple times. I mean, it kind of threw my thought process off, and I, uh, I accept the fact that I didn't properly – uh, defend the iron bar. That was my own fault. I was a little eager to rip my arms out and, you know, beat on them when I should have played it smarter and, you know, kind of collapsed down on them and then defended it the right way and got my arm out. But, uh, so, I mean, that's definitely a mistake. I'm not looking to make ever again. But, uh, you know, that's all you can do is learn from your st- mistakes and not, you know, get down on yourself or any shit like that. So, All right. Uh, yeah, definitely. You just got to move on, right? Yeah, most definitely. So, I mean, chalking it up on the board, it counts as a loss. I see it as a win, but we're looking past that now. We're on to the future of bigger, better things right now. So, oh, so let's talk about your uh, fight coming up. You're fighting Deshaun uh, Costas, who's 1-2, and two, yeah. coming off a big win. Uh, what are your thoughts against your opponent? Um, he, had a, uh, he had a pretty tough opponent, and I think that he ran away with that arm bar pretty good. You know, he played it good. Um, seems like a tough kid. Never gonna ever look down on somebody, you know. I'm always looking at my opponent as the toughest ever, you know, every time it's a different person. So, um, we're just gonna see how things go out, you know. But um, playing it as, I think he's a pretty, you know, pretty tough kid. So, I think it'll be a good fight. It's a good matchup for me, so. Awesome. We'll see where it goes. Well, tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get into MMA and which discipline um, do you favor um, more or have more of a background in? Uh, you know, it kind of started out as a thing in high school, um, between getting picked on and, and getting in part, you know, fights at parties and stuff. I mean, I think that's how probably 80% of the people that are in New York, that's how they started out with boxing at and stuff, you know, but, um, uh, so I, you know, I just kind of was rugged growing up and then from there, uh, I got you know, a little bit of judo background. I've done jujitsu. Um, I look at myself more or less as a free, I call myself a freestyle fighter because I don't have one particular style. I, uh, I, I like to learn from everything and then kind of do my own thing from there, you know? I got mm-hmm. my own individual style. I'm not one single discipline, you know? And I think in the MMA world, you need to be, you know, more three-dimensional than a one-dimensional kind of person, you know? Yeah, definitely. In high school, were you, or in college, did you were athletic, participate in any sports by any, any chance? Yeah, I mean, uh, even freshman 
year, I, uh, I made varsity in three sports. I played baseball, I played uh, soccer, and then I also did a little bit of wrestling, too, for a couple of years. And then um, that kind of died off, but I stuck with the sports throughout high school, and then I uh, never really got into sports in college, just kind of did my own thing, working out, and then, you know, when one of my buddies started training with MV MMA, and he kind of got a hold of me, he's like, yo, man, I, I really think that you should come check this place out, and I was training with some other guys, um, it was like a backyard fight team kind of deal, you know, country boys, I don't know if you ever heard of them, but that's who I started out with, and then uh, from there, I've been with MV MMA ever since, you know, I put in a couple years with the country boys, and then got on this MV MMA team, and I just, it's been good luck for me ever since, I'm, you know, it's a great, great group of guys there. Uh, definitely, and that's bringing me into my next question was, uh, tell me about Mohawk Valley MMA. I, I'm I'm down on Long Island. Uh, for all the Long Island people down here in New York City, I, I guess still it's still kind of like a gap between upstate New York and lower part of New York, and I, I, I'd like to close that gap so everyone kind of knows everyone from top to bottom. Tell us a bit about Mohawk Valley MMA and uh, what's unique about it and what it brings to the table? Because you guys had a pretty good showing at Cage Wars 34. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, one of the, the biggest things there is Duff Holmes. He, you know, he's got such an extensive resume. I, I don't even know where to start. You know, he's been everywhere it's from amateur to personal training. He's even trained guys in the UFC, you know, Matt Hamill and, and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, it's just all around a great place. You know, and he doesn't focus on one single thing there. Where you know we do all sorts of stuff there, so it's just like it's very, you know, very three dimensional kind of deal. It's not a one dimensional kind of gym. He's doing all sorts of stuff from Muay Thai to you know regular boxing. We got wrestling practices. It's like it's everywhere, you know, and it's great. I'm just I'm eating it up there, and so are the other guys, you know. I mean, when you're put in an environment like that where there's all sorts of good talent around you, it's hard not to be good. You know, competition's great there. So we're, it's, it's a great group of guys. We're always pushing each other. You know, even on the easy days, we're still going hard in there, you know. It don't matter if we're there for an hour or three hours or, or whatever. We're, you know, we're always pushing 110% there, and that's, that's where we get our drive from, you know. And we're going to come out strong again in those next cage wars. The people that are going to be there, I mean, sit back, grab your popcorn, get yourself a beer because you're going to be seeing some matches go down. Well, I know I'm looking forward to going there and checking out the uh, the awesome card. I believe it's 20 fights, six title fights. So it should be pretty yeah. exciting there at uh, Cage Wars 35. Tell us a bit about your goals and your future for um, MMA in the sport. Um, as of right now, you're an amateur. How long till timetable to become a pro? Is there a thought of that? Um, definitely goals are to, uh, to achieve my title right now at the 45, and then I want to be able to defend that, and then we're looking to push pro from there. I've been in this game for a while now. Um, it, like In between, I was, I was in a strong, and then I kind of fell off for a little bit, but I'm back now. We're, we're going even harder than before. Um, we know what we want. We're coming to get it. So... It's just I'm focusing on that 45 title, and then from there, you know, who, who knows how long. Could be a couple months, could be, you know, six months. You never know. But the, the ultimate goal is to push to go pro. Um, right, Duff's got connections everywhere. So, I mean, we, we're looking at promotions from King of the Cage to CFSC. Um, you know, he's had his hand in UFC, and he's also got a guy in Bellator right now with a three-fight contract. So it's like... You know, the ultimate goal is to definitely go pro. I've been in it way too long to, to you know, let this hard work go to waste. So you'll definitely be seeing me in the pro fights in the near future. Excellent, excellent. I, I know. I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing here. Tell us what inspires you and um, motivates you to get in the cage. You said you took some time off, um, and then you're now you're back in. You're fully focused. What inspires you and motivates you to get in that cage? Um, I mean, there's all sorts of things that inspire me, but for, for the most part, um, I would have to say that, like, you know, my grandfather was a boxer when he was in the military when he was alive, and, uh, so I, I've, like, always kind of felt like I've had a, um, 
like ultimate goal in life, you know, to, to be something great. And that's ultimately what I want to achieve is to, you know, be something that people talk about and that, you know, just being a, a positive influence around other people and whatnot and just, you know, seeing how you influence other people. And it's just that enough right there is to, is enough drive to make you to get where you want to go. Um, and then also things like just, I got my own goals, you know, like I want to go pro, I want to get that belt. So it's like, it, it lights a fire under my ass to, you know, get into gear. And I got people pushing me, like uh, I got Duff pushing me, I got guys in the gym pushing me. I got my girlfriend and my family all backing me and stuff. So it's like, you know, it's just good vibes everywhere. Awesome, yeah. Strong support system is always uh, key to success. Uh, tell us um, thoughts about um, do you have any thoughts or to your opponent, and do you have any sponsors? Um, currently, uh, just the sponsors that sponsor Duff and the MVM. I'm 18. Um, when I'm when I'm ready to go pro, then you pick your own sponsors and whatnot. And uh, to Deshaun, I just wish him the best of luck, and you know he seems like a good kid and a good fighter, and I'm just ready to get in there and put on a show for everybody. You know, I mean that's what it's all about. So. Uh, before we wrap it up, uh, is there one thing that um, nobody knows about you that you would like the fans to know about you? Um, I mean, you see good people in the sport and everything, you kind of like wonder what their story was and whatnot. Um, one thing that people probably want to know about me is that I used to be that kid in high school that was like that short, little chubby kid that always got bullied and picked on and stuff now, and, and you know, and that just... I want people to know that just because you might be going through a hard time when you're younger or anything like that doesn't mean that you can't turn it around and become something great from it, you know? So that's one thing I would say my fans probably don't know about me. It's where a lot of my drive comes from as well, too. Awesome. Well, Brandon Bartle, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with me in MyMMANews.com. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you fight and broadcast your fight. Um, so I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate that, Kyle. Can't wait to put on a show for you guys. Awesome. Thanks, man. Have a good one.